the air purifier guide. You may be asking yourself, how do I pick the right air purifier? In this video, we're going to help you. First, we're going to cover the 10 types of air purifiers, so you'll know the 10 different types of technology. Also, which brands match your needs, how to avoid spending too much. For example, looking at the price of replacement filters and the warranties that are out there. And also some suggestions where to find coupons and specials. You may want to make a little list of the type of filters that are going to match your needs. Uh, the square footage, cost and savings, warranty suggestions, and perhaps some other options of sites and purifiers to look at. Part 1, the 10 types of air purifiers explained. And these are the 10 types of purification, the primary types of purification you'll see in air purifiers that are out there. So let's start with HEPA. HEPA means high efficiency particulate and it's a cloth-like filter. It captures dust and pollen. It's supposed to be 99.97% effective to be called HEPA, which was actually first developed by the government. The pros of HEPA are it's really the best for allergies because it captures dust and pollen. It also does clean the air. The cons are it, the filters can often be overpriced. Some of the machines can be overpriced. So you're going to need to pay periodically for replacement filters. Those filters should be between oh, $40, $50, but you'll see ones that are actually even up as much as $200. So this is a must for if you have allergies or you have a dust problem. Next, we have UV light or ultraviolet light. It's using the bulb form or an LCD light form. They are used in hospitals and they purify the air. So the pros are that they can kill germs, bacteria, viruses, mold, and some mildew. It sanitizes the air. It supports your immune system. And so basically it purifies. It doesn't clean. It really purifies the air. The cons are is that it purifies, doesn't clean. You have to change the bulb every year or so and the replacements should be anywhere between ten and twenty dollars and I give you those prices for replacements because many manufacturers make a lot or maybe most of their money on once you bought the machine that you have to pay the replacement filters but this UV's lights is kind of a must for any sensitive immune systems TiO2 or nanotechnology TiO2 uh, is a type of technology that basically enhances UV. So when the UV light bounces off of this TiO2 substance, it magnifies it many, many times. So when air flows through the machine, it's going to kill more of the bacteria and viruses much more effectively than just UV light alone. So the pros are enhances UV many times. It's relatively inexpensive. It supports your immune system. And again, it purifies, it's not clean, and it basically requires UV light to be effective. The next is electrostatic. And electrostatic, like the one pictured here, has these metal plates, may look like uh, little cookie cooking plates inside, and it has positive and negatively charged plates. And what that does is basically attract anything that's got the opposite charge to it. And that's why these plates will attract soot, car pollution, etc. So it attracts and it's good for some things. The pros are it's inexpensive, it's washable, it'll clear smoke out pretty effectively. So for any smokers, electrostatic might be something to look for. It will remove pollution, some odor, uh, but primarily smoke. The cons are, despite many of the claims, it really doesn't clean so much, uh, meaning it doesn't work on dust or pollen or things you might be allergic to very well. It doesn't remove really hair. And some of them have been known if they get dirty to zap, they make a little electrical sound because of that positive ne negative charge. So it's really not a good primary filter, but it is good for smoke odor. Um, and it'll have some effect on mold as well. Next we have carbon and zeolite, two different minerals, but I put them together because they operate somewhat the same. I actually like zeolite a little bit better, uh, but they basically hold gas as gases or odors or fumes go across carbon or zeolite what happens is they have very attractive little holes or little caves or pockets it's very poor substance so all the thousands and thousands of holes that are inside the mineral will actually trap and hold those gases 
So the pros are it's, it's an in, relatively inexpensive. It can capture gas and odors very well or fumes. And the, But the cons are it has to be replaced periodically unless you can put it out in the sun once in a while, let the sun's heat release a lot of those gases from inside. It really doesn't clean. It really just captures odor and it's often overpriced. So again, not a good primary filter, but it does uh, good work on fumes and odors and chemicals in the air. Then we come to pre-filter, and it's really kind of a little thing that happens before, ideally before the HEPA filter or electrostatic filter. And it's got, you know, just like a screen door, it can keep bugs out and hair. And so basically it serves to kind of capture large poly, uh, molecules before it hits the HEPA. So the, the pros are, it's inexpensive, it's washable, often can be plastic, it can capture hair, capture some pollen, some dust, and because of that, it'll extend the life of the HEPA filter, which uh, captures all those, but then you have to replace it. The cons are it really doesn't clean that much, but it's just a very inexpensive addition to any air purifier, and it's good to have it so your HEPA filter lasts longer, so it'll save you money. Next, we have ozone, and ozone is basically oxygen with one extra molecule. It's what happens after a storm and lightning hits the air in the atmosphere. You might smell ozone because that electrical charge is adding an additional molecule to O2 or oxygen. And But it's very unstable. But what's good in a machine when it, you have that, and what's bad about it, I'll get into that in a second, but it'll go out into the room. So ozone generating machines basically push ozone out into the room and it spreads through the room and it purifies the air. And what it's good for is that it's inexpensive. It'll kill some mold and some mildew. It'll kill older and knock out smoke probably better than anything. So it basically treats the air. The cons are it does not capture dust or pollen. Too much ozone can harm your lungs. And if your lungs are very sensitive, even a little bit of ozone can really irritate the, the tissues of the lungs because those those unstable molecules that don't last that long can actually irritate and be attracted to the cells in your airways. So it really doesn't clean so much. It more purifies the air. So again, not a good primary filter. And then we have ionic. Ionic has, well, negative ions. There's two kinds of sides. There are ones that are called ionizers, and those are really the same as electrostatic. They have the plates in them. So, uh, but negative ions is an inexpensive thing. Um, ionic is the one that has the plates. So there's a little bit of distinction between the two, but a lot of it operates somewhat the same. Um, can capture fumes, kill fumes. Um, I need to make a better distinction here. So ionic is the type that has the plates that you wash, like the electrostatic. Ions, like a negative ionizer, that's one that just puts negative ions out into the room and that's really good for your lungs. It will kill some odor and some mold as well too. Ionic are the same as pretty much electrostatic. So next you have a gas chamber type. You don't see those very often. They're somewhat inexpensive. Uh, they can capture gas and odors. A little gas chamber that will actually capture those things. And you don't really find many of them so uh, it's not one that I recommend. And then finally you have, on occasion, you see little tiny units that are water-based. So you have a filter of water, basically, where the fan will pull the air through the water and the water will get brown or a little dirty. It'll capture some dust. Uh, anybody that has a rainbow vacuum cleaner kind of operates the same way. It's using water as a filter. So it's somewhat inexpensive if you use it on occasion. Uh, but the fan tends to be need to be stronger to pull the air through the water. And the only ones you see out there are pretty small, the water-based air purifiers. And it'll capture some dust and, and dirt. Uh, it's really not effective for odor, any kind of gases. It doesn't purify, it doesn't do anything for um, mold, mildew. In fact, sometimes it can add to the problem by putting more water into the air too. And so they're small, they're inexpensive, they they don't cost anything when you buy them, but I don't really recommend them because the to run it consistently doesn't make sense and you have to change the water pretty often. So given all those technologies, what do you think is the best approach to get the air really clean? 
Well, the best approach is to get rid of as many allergens and toxins as you can by using as many technologies as possible, but yet doing it at a reasonable cost. And that's why the Alive Air 9 stage air purifier was created. It includes high quality HEPA, a washable pre filter, washable electrostatic, a carbon filter, negative ion, and also includes UV and TI2 to kill viruses, germs, and bacteria to get all the really bad stuff out at a reasonable price. The Alive Air Purifier is now on sale for $297 with free shipping. It has inexpensive replacement filters, a three-year warranty, and it's a money-back guarantee. It'll cover over 850 square feet, and it has automatic sensors which monitor the air quality. What you can do is compare the Alive Air Purifier to any purifier you can find, so you can give your body awesome air by getting an Alive Air Purifier today. Check out the link below or go to aliveair.com to learn more.